Good morning. Welcome to Oak Point Church and our second week of our Christmas series, Blue or White. We're glad that you've joined us today online and uh, hope you're having a fantastic uh, Sunday morning uh, as we are coming together here uh, and worshiping Jesus. So thank you for joining us uh, today. I don't know if you've uh, spent any time over the last few days and few weeks trying to find the best Christmas lights. And uh, have you found any? Uh, I've driven around a little bit, even in the midst of being quarantined. Uh, uh, at night, I would get out in the car a couple of times and just sort of ride around to see what kind of lights are out there. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. So everybody listen to this. How many of you have ever been to Christmas City, USA? Have you ever heard of Christmas City, USA? It's not that far from here. Uh, it's probably a little over an hour, hour and 20 minutes. It's in McCaddenville, North Carolina. I don't know if you've ever been to McCaddenville. It's right on the interstate uh, between uh, Gastonia and Charlotte as you head up uh, I-85 uh, North. Uh, if you've never been there, I want to encourage you to go there. It's an, an incredible experience. I'll never forget one of the first times that I ever went to McCaddenville uh, was when Deanna and I first started dating. And uh, we had, I uh, only went out a couple of times and it was getting near Christmas. And, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to impress this lady. So we went to uh, Heritage USA, which was also uh, not, not far from Charlotte uh, near Carowinds. And they had an incredible lights there. And we took this little train ride. And I'm sure Deanna was thinking, wow, this guy is so romantic. That's probably the last time I've ever done anything very romantic. But then we came back by and we went through McCaddenville. And um, so if you've never been to McCaddenville, I want to encourage you to do that. You still have a couple of days before Christmas. It's a great experience. Um, used to just drive through, but now I think it's really good because Dan and I went a couple of years ago. <clears throat> it's really good to park your car, get out and walk, walk around uh, the neighborhoods and, and see all the lights. It's a great experience. And there's something about Christmas and lights and bright lights that just go together. You know, I love a lot of lights at Christmas time. And, you know, when we think about Christmas time, for me at least, I think about lights and so lights make me also think about uh, being joyful and being happy when you have a lot of lights especially at christmas time it seems to be a time uh, of joy for all of us but maybe 2020 has not been a very joyful experience for you when we think about singing one of uh, our favorite uh, christmas songs joy to the world we really don't have a whole lot of joy and so that's what I want to talk to you about today is finding joy when I don't feel joyful. <laughs> How do we find joy when we don't feel joyful? And 2020 has definitely been a year where I would say that most of us have had a lot of days that we have not felt uh, extremely joyful. So I want to answer this question. When should I be joyful? When should I be joyful? Well, I think we can look at Scripture and it might surprise you of what Scripture says about times that we should be joyful. Let's look at a couple of verses of Scripture this morning. James uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 2 and 3 says that we're to be joyful in times of troubles and trials. Look at what he says here in James. Now think about this. This is, this is almost unbelievable to, that scripture would say this, consider it pure joy, not fake joy. It's not fake news here. <laughs> consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produce, produces perseverance. So scripture says, James says here, that we are to consider it pure joy when we face troubles and trials. Joy? When I'm facing troubles and trials? I know this past week uh, I had an experience for myself and, and for Deanna as well and for our church family. Uh, an individual that felt like it was 
um, her place to to attack us and and to accuse us of a lot of, of things and make all these false accusations and just basically come up with all these different stories of things that I've done and and uh, so you know what they really didn't make me feel a whole lot of joy when she did that there really wasn't this overwhelming joy that was just flowing through my body toward this individual but scripture says that we're to consider things like that pure joy trials and troubles difficult times um, maybe for you over the past year uh, financially things haven't gone like you planned maybe your income sort of been cut in half because of the pandemic and uh, lack of work maybe you own your own business or maybe you don't but yet you've been impacted by the pandemic you've been impacted by COVID and so scripture says consider it pure joy so that's one place and one time in our lives when we uh, encounter uh, troubles and trials we're to consider uh, joy and be joyful in our lives look at another another place scripture talks about in Isaiah chapter 52 verse verse 9 look at what it says burst into songs of joy together you ruins of Jerusalem for the Lord has comforted his people he has redeemed Jerusalem so what's what's going on here uh, we know that Jerusalem was was uh, overtaken and destroyed by the Babylonian army and so God is saying here in the midst of your life being in ruins sing songs of joy <laughs> when your life is in ruin sing songs of joy maybe you think well that's what 2020 has been uh, these past nine or ten months have been a place for me that my life is basically in ruins I see no hope I see no future maybe he left you or maybe she said hey I'm done it's over with that person that you thought you were gonna spend the rest of your life with maybe they're not here anymore and so your life is in ruins scripture says to burst into songs of joy when that happens okay so scripture says that we're to be joyful in times of troubles and trials it also says that we're to burst into songs of joy when our life is in ruins another place here in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 says sing barren women you who never bore a child burst into song shout for joy you who were never in labor because more are the children of the desolate women than of her who has a husband says the Lord now look at this another time in our life scripture says that we're to be joyful is in this situation here is when a woman can't give birth now in those days in the Old Testament giving birth was very important to not only a woman but also to a man to be able to have a child and if you were a woman and you could not have children it was not a very exciting time it really wasn't there wasn't a lot of reason to have joy but scripture says to burst into song and shout for joy you who never are in labor so when I experience loss I'm to be joyful <laughs> COVID has taken someone maybe dear to you this past year. Scripture says that when we experience loss, we're to be joyful. Maybe you know exactly what Scripture is talking about. Maybe you've experienced this firsthand. Uh, you've been trying to have a baby. You're married and, and it, it just hasn't happened. Or maybe you were pregnant and you lost the, the child. I can't imagine what that experience would be like but even in those times scripture says that we can be joyful so we've got three different situations here 
Scripture says to be joyful in times of, of troubles and trials, to be joyful when our life is in ruins, and to be joyful when we experience loss. Hmm. That don't make a whole lot of sense to me because those are some very difficult times, but yet God's Word says to be joyful. So the question that we need to answer this morning is how can I be joyful when I have troubles and trials and my life is in ruins and when I experience loss? How can I be joyful? Well, it can only happen through an encounter with Jesus Christ. That's the only way it can happen. Let's look at a couple of encounters that uh, individuals had when Jesus was born. Let's first look at the shepherds and see what happened to them in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 20. It says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. They were glorifying and praising God. That means they had joy in their hearts because they had encountered the Messiah. They had encountered Emmanuel, God with us. They had an encounter with Jesus and it brought joy to their hearts. Not only for the shepherds, but also for the wise men. Now we know the wise men were not at the the manger uh, when Jesus uh, was born. They were not there at the feeding trough like the shepherds were. But let's, let's look and see uh, what happened with the wise men there in Matthew chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. It says, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They had joy because they knew what the star meant and they knew that the star was going to take them to the Messiah. On coming to the house... Notice, they didn't come to the manger. By this time, Jesus was probably maybe a year and a half or two years old. They saw the child, wasn't a baby anymore, with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they were overjoyed because they had an encounter with Jesus. The Messiah, the one that they had heard about, and the one that they had been waiting on for so many years. And so the question that I need to ask you today is, have you had an encounter, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ? If you have, and you put your faith and trust in Jesus, then He lives within you now. And if He lives in you, then you have joy. Do you know why? Because Jesus is joy. Jesus is joy. Joy is supernatural. It's not based on any of our circumstances. Let's look at this. Paul wrote about it in Philippians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 4. Look at what, what Paul says. And you've got to understand what's going on. Look at what he says. Rejoice or have joy in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Now, that word rejoice means to have joy. So Paul's saying, have joy. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about Paul saying this is what was going on in his life when he was saying this. His circumstances stunk. <laughs> his, his life basically could have been viewed as a life in ruins. You know why? Because when he wrote this, he was in prison. He was in prison, and not only was he in prison, but the custom of those days was he was chained to a guard. 24-7, you're chained to a guard. And so while he is in prison, maybe it would be very tempting for him to say, I see no future, I have no hope, my life is destroyed, I'm here for nothing really that I've done that's wrong. But yet he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'm going to tell you again, have joy. Have joy. Now, Paul is saying that in the middle of incredibly terrible circumstances. So our joy is not based on our circumstances. Our joy 
is based on Jesus. It's supernatural. Joy is supernatural. Joy is a God thing. You know what? Circumstances will always let us down. Cir our circumstances are, are for the most part, many times, they're not going to be good. If I had to guess, for most of you who are watching today, you're going to have more circumstances that are difficult and, and hard to, to deal with and to cope with than you're going to have those circumstances that are good. For many of us, most of our lives is not lived on a mountaintop where everything is great and everything is perfect. No, our lives are lived in the valley with sickness and disease and discouragement and disappointment and lack of finances and our plans not going like we thought they should. Those are not good circumstances. But Scripture says that in the middle of those not so good circumstances that we can still have joy. Now, joy doesn't mean that we're always positive and that we're always happy. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. There are many times in my life that I don't feel happy. Happy, being happy is based on our happenings. So, if our happenings or if our circumstances are good, then many times we can be happy. We can have a smile on our face. We can say, praise God, everything's great. But when our happenings and the things around us are not that good, then many times in our lives we're not very happy. But that's the big difference in joy and happiness. Joy is something that comes from within. Joy is something that only God can give us. You know why? Because He is joy. And He lives within you. And He lives within me. Now, I want you to listen to me really close. Now, I don't know what may be distracting you right now, but I want you to listen to what I have to say. Listen real close. Stop trying to be joyful. Yep. You heard me. I said it, stop trying to be joyful because you nor I can ever manufacture or make up or make joy happen in our lives because we're surrounded by so much junk and so many trials and troubles and, and, and ruins and, and loss. We're surrounded by all of that. We can't make up joy. We can't produce it in our lives. So stop trying to do it. Okay? Are you with me now? Stop trying to be joyful. You can't be joyful. I can't be joyful. It can only happen because of Jesus. That's the only reason that we can have joy. Now you may be in your life thinking about somebody and it may not be your own life. It may be somebody else that you know. That there's no joy. Think about it. I mean, it doesn't take us long to, to that to come up in our minds. Somebody that we know. Somebody, maybe a family member. Or, or maybe somebody you work with. And there just is no joy in their life at all. I mean, they're, all the circumstances and all the junk of life have just got them buried. You know why there's no joy? There's no Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can give us joy. So here's what I want to challenge you to do. Scripture talks about dying to self. And so that's what we need to start doing. We need to start dying to self because self sees all these bad circumstances and then gets overwhelmed by all these bad circumstances. So die to self die to self every day and die to trying to manufacture joy it can't be done he is our joy christmas 2020 if you've had an encounter a personal encounter with jesus christ and he lives within you you can experience joy it doesn't have to be a blue christmas for you yes things around you may be terrible 
you may have experienced loss in, in the middle of some incredibly uh, discouraging trials and troubles and you may think that your life is in ruins but because of Jesus you can experience pure joy that's what scripture says now I don't know about you but I'm gonna believe what God says over what I think God says that I can experience pure joy even when it doesn't seem like I can it's because of Jesus do you know him today if you've never said yes to Jesus what an incredible time to do that 2020 Christmas 2020 right now right where you're sitting say yes I know I've sinned I God, I, I believe you sent Jesus to the world to pay the price for my sin and right now I put my faith and trust in Jesus Jesus you come into my life and you change me do you need to do that today I encourage you the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life is to say yes to Jesus and you can begin to experience joy an unspeakable joy that you never thought that you could have why because of you no because of him blue or white what kind of Christmas are you gonna have in 2020 a white Christmas is connected to this verse in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 he says come let us let's consider your options says the Lord though your sins have stained you like the color red you can't hide it you can see it like the color red but you can become white like snow though the though you are as easy to see as the color scarlet you can become white like wool you can become pure and clean again because of Jesus if you don't know him I encourage you to get to know him today and you can experience a truly truly joyful white Christmas in 2020 let me pray for you right now so let's do that together right now God I thank you for your word today I thank you for the truth of the gospel and I thank you that uh, even though our circumstances may be pretty bleak and we see no future no hope Lord I thank you that I and every person watching here can experience true joy in our lives because of Jesus I thank you for that promise we give you praise today in Jesus name amen a couple of things I want to mention to you before um, I leave you this this morning uh, don't forget we're still gonna have our Christmas Eve worship gatherings so that's gonna be at 4 and 5 o'clock now that's not gonna be online but I want to encourage you to come uh, you should have gotten a sign up if you didn't you can message me or text me or text the church office or whatever you need to do but you should have gotten a sign up genius and uh, you can go on there and sign up as to which time you want to come uh, we're going to be socially distanced if you feel comfortable and you need to wear a mask wear a mask I know there'll be many people uh, that will do that so that's going to be on Christmas Eve at four or five o'clock you come and join us for that time and then also on the 27th we're not going to be having any worship together so you experience uh, and uh, that that Sunday maybe with your family do something different on that Sunday morning we're not going to be uh, having any worship gatherings uh, either in person or online on that day and then one a quick announcement especially for all you married couples uh, we uh, have planned and gonna be having a little marriage retreat uh, in March and you'll be hearing a lot more about that over the next couple of weeks but I want to encourage all of you folks that are married out there to be a part of that that's gonna be March the 12th through the 14th it's gonna be at Lakeside Lodge up on uh, Lake Hartwell and uh, it's gonna be an incredible setting and I know it's gonna be a great experience for all you married folk out there it's our I still do uh, marriage retreat and you'll be hearing a lot more about that all right well if I don't see you again before Christmas I hope you have an incredibly merry and wonderful joy filled Christmas in 2020 God bless you I love you and if there's anything we can do for you uh, please let us know you can go to our website oakpointchurch.org there's a connection card if you would just fill that out and we'll be able to get in touch with you but I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time God bless <music>